Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Tetsuya Shoji, CEO of President NTT Communications Corporation. Mr. Masakazu Kobayashi, Managing Director, NTT Communications India. Mr. Sharat Sangi, Managing Director and CEO, NetMagic. Distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure and honor to be present at this NTT Global Forum 2017. First, I'd like to offer my congratulations to NTT Communications India on their major achievement of becoming the first license holder among Japanese companies for international long distance network operation Perita India in March this year. I understand that the license enables the enhancement of the ICT environment of multinational companies, including Japanese companies operating in India. NTT Communications in India has aggressively invested in India, which is evident from the establishment of their several branches and data centers all over the country. The company's one-stop ICT service are highly regarded in India. I believe that the acquisition of a new international communications license by the Indian subsidiary of NTT Communications enhances the communication connectivity between India and other nations, and it is greatly beneficial for India. Let me talk a little bit about uh, Japan-India relationship. As you know, we are enjoying one of the best moments with regard to our bilateral relationship in more than 10, 20 years. Our two prime ministers really enjoy personal trust, sharing uh, global views and strategic interest. Our prime minister will come sometime this year to enhance even more our bilateral relationship. With regard to our economic investment relationship, as you are all aware, the number of companies and the volume of investment is now growing in a very rapid pace. As you see the figure last year, 2016, the entire volume of our investment coming from Japan to India is 4.7 billion US dollars. Compared with the figure as previous year, 2015, the number was 2.6. So it's a big increase in terms of volume. Not only the volume, but also the sphere of uh, in the investment coming from Japan is now expanding. It means that not only very you know, robust and traditional uh, investment in the area of uh, manufacturing like automobile industry, but also we see the new areas of investment such as services, retail companies. Now many new companies are looking into the possibility of investment, investing here in India. I really encourage to have a more investment from rather small, medium-sized enterprises and new companies dealing with the IoT business. I always impress, impress by the very strong enthusiasm on the part of uh, Indian companies, especially to partner with Japanese companies, especially in the area of uh, new business, startups, and IT-related business. Whenever I go to the city like uh, Bengaluru, I had a lot of uh, contacts and interactions with uh, Indian companies. They express strong interest to have a more close relationship with Japanese companies. I, as, a, as a government, I like to find out a way to facilitate the partnership and more discussion, collaboration between Japanese and Indian companies in areas such as IoT and healthcare and other, other uh, businesses. So uh, in this forum, uh, we are talking about the importance of uh, innovation and IoT-related business. That is the area really I like to uh, focus on in the near future. And also, I like to say viewers in other areas, uh, which Japan has a strong interest. In this very volatile world, uh, Japan-India relationship is something very certain. I think that in coming years, our relationship should be even more robust and strengthened in many areas, not only in the investment and trade, but also in the areas such as defense and security 
and culture and technology and among others. So our, our relationship should continue to be very, very robust. Japan and India are now talking about the importance of our maritime security and Indo-Pacific uh, new strategies that is announced by Japanese Prime Minister. It is something very similar to Prime Minister Modi's Act East policy. We are seeing a lot of synergy between two initiatives to create something very concrete. Now we are discussing with the Indian government how to have a more concrete project with regard to connectivity. Connectivity means how to connect the uh, Indian subcontinent with other neighboring countries and more widely to connect here with Africa and Asia. That is a way I think we have a more pro prosperous economies of Japan and India. Especially I have a special interest in doing more business in African continent. As you know, Indian companies have a long tradition, long experience, and vast network in African market, especially Eastern part of Africa. I have been approached by many Indian companies leaders to express the interest of having more partnership with Japanese companies to sell products produced here to have some joint venture in African continent. Not only looking west, but also looking east. I think, of course, uh, Japanese companies have long experience dealing with ASEAN countries. Of course, India has uh, several sizable amount of diaspora in some of the ASEAN countries, but they have little experience doing business in, uh, in Southeast Asia. So maybe we can do something very significant partnering between Japanese companies and Indian companies. So uh, this you know, evolution is something very dramatic. Uh, not only talking about uh, Indian market, it's already very big and growing, but also we are going to see the most more you know, wide range of uh, areas for our mutual uh, cooperation. We have a strong commitment. Japanese, has, Japanese government has strong commitment to have a more strategic, robust relationship with India. This is Prime Minister Abe's strong interest. I have been talking with him many times. I am very much convinced that he has strong commitment to do more with regard to uh, India-Japan relationship. I have a strong backing from him, and uh, I'm told that whatever I can do for the very progressive ideas, we have their uh, support. So uh, in this way, I hope in coming several years, uh, we could be able to cement our relationship and looking for future. So this is the best timing, I think, uh, for doing business in India. I have talked uh, with uh, many business leaders in Japan, and I'm very much encouraged that they have a very strong hope and interest in increasing their business in this country. I know that we have uh, several difficulties in dealing business in here in India. Of course, we are always uh, able to, we are ready to stand uh, behind you to try to solve the problems you may face in, in the future. So in this way, a robust relationship in this very volatile world and predictable world, Japan-India relationship should continue to be the cornerstone in the prosperity and security in this region, not, not in this region, but globally. So I'm very much uh, convinced and very much encouraged that this kind of endeavor uh, to enhance a bilateral relationship in government level, in private sector level, will continue to increase in years to come. So thank you very much for inviting me on this very auspicious moment. Uh, I'd like to congratulate again NTT Communications for holding this important gathering and a lot of success. I have already visited some of the places in NTT Communications and also um, NetMagic uh, doing here in this country. So I hope great success in years to come for NTT Global, NTT Communications. And also I'd like to uh, uh, hope the great success in individual countries, companies' success in this country. Thank you very much for your attention.